Hello, welcome back to Stranded Deep, welcome back to the map editor, and welcome back to this island, what we've been making. We've put the largest shipwreck we could get away with, we put some vegetation, we put some rocks down, and we have created paths with sight lines so that when you are running around on this island, you can see exactly what we need you to see from the direction we needed to see it in, including the front of the boat, because that's pretty freaking impressive. We've created land islands, islands of vegetation, which look pretty sweet, and they will have grass on them in the actual game itself. The sprites don't render in the map editor, but we know this. We've also created islands out to sea, which are covered in lots of uh, goodness, and the wreck is not just on its own, it is accompanied by a tragedy. Other wrecks, which it looks like it may have driven through, but but because we are, well, we're not a deity, but a forgiving Q entity, maybe, uh, we have made sure that the entrances to the wreck, even if you can't, swim up and little do a little hibbity hop over uh, the railings, or don't want to swim out to sea because... Mm, I don't know if we'll put sharks out there, but it, it might be a little bit difficult to get on uh, over the sides, but you should be able to get on underwater assuming the game doesn't just throw coral or something in the way it probably will rocks coral that sort of lovely stuff but yeah we have this this island there's not a lot here but we've been working from the wreck outwards kind of just dressing in the island as we're going and it's working out for us um in previous previous times previous ways we have just put stuff down and put hills and things down and we we kind of left the vegetation to last but you know what this is also working. This is a different way of doing it, and and we will carry on by opening the rocks um, in the map editor. I'm actually recording this quite late um, in the day, so this might go up later than normal. Not that the, the not that there's a schedule on the channel because there isn't a schedule on the channel. Um, I've spent most of this week building an e-bike because I got rid of my motorbike for the first time since college. I I'm not a biker boy. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna drag, drag, drag this big rock out while I uh, kind of explain. Yes. So that's that's what I've been doing the previous uh, previous week. Also working on a little bit of a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons. A little bit of Dungeons and Dragons because that's another thing that may or may not end up on the channel. Um, speaking of D and D and speaking of map editing. Uh, because I was spending a lot of time last week looking at uh, map tools, mapping tools, to run a campaign. Or uh, for the others, or the people, all the people you know already, all the people I played um, on the live streams with, all the other people who have been on the on the channel in the past. Um, yeah, I was looking for really good mapping software that could also be used with Wacom, and I found two: Wonderdraft, which is a world editor. Um, like like a world map editor, which is wonderdraft.net, hashtag not sponsored. I would give that lad a shout out even, well, I just did, even if I wasn't being paid. That is really, really good software. Uh, can be used with a mouse, can be used with a pen. It is absolutely what I wanted in like a world map creator. But uh, I was talking to a lad at work and he mentioned the fact that Wonderdraft is getting another bit of software, like a sister bit of software called Dungeon Draft, which allows you to draw dungeons in much the same way with your Wacom. I would, well, it's dungeondraft.net, all one word, hashtag not spawn again. Um, yeah, no, it's it's really good. As someone who uses a Wacom Pro every day and has one at home, because why would I not? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a really good way of uh, making dungeons. I know there's some other stuff on Steam that I was just giving a go, but it's kind of awkward to use and layering is kind of awkward to use. So yeah, so if you're into D&D, Wonder Draft and Dungeon Draft. Dungeon Draft comes out tonight, midnight GMT time. Um, if you're watching these videos as they go up, otherwise ignore that. It's probably already out if you're watching this as a future person in the future. So how is the future? Um, yeah, I'm just throwing these rocks down as I'm talking, just dragging out big rocks. And it's like, why are you doing this? Why? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you talking? Well, because if I didn't talk, it would be a very boring video. But you know, um, so last time we put these this barrier of rocks and we put this cliff six in and we were like, this is so we can control the player pathing, but I want to create a way to make the player, give the player the ability to path up here. We're going to need to know, however, how big the player is, because they can jump about half the height of a door. And I wish we had a door. Under structures, here's a door. Excellent. It's almost as if we have a plan. We don't have a plan. We do have a plan. 
it's just a terrible plan. Don't worry about it. So here's the door. I'm just going to press R. Make sure I'm, I am actually moving the door around. And let's press a little T. Just kind of make sure the door is uh, where we need it to be. If you are new to these videos, oh, I better tell you the controls we're using. We're using W, S, A, and D to move board back, left and right. We're using Q to go down, E to go up. We're holding the right mouse button to pan around. Uh, we push T to transform. We push R to rotate. We grab these little toggles and move things around and everything is better in the world for it. The doors uh, a point of rotation is actually on the bottom right as you're looking at it from the front. I guess that's the front. Maybe the back's the front? Hmm. We'll never talk of this again. Anyway, uh, the door is about the height of a human player, and you also need to make sure everything is kind of half the height of the door if you want people to be leaping up and down on things, like leapy up and down people. Speaking of which, just the just as a side, and as, as an aside, there are other things here. Uh, we've got the trees, items, rocks, structures, animals. <gasps> oh, yes. Uh, shark, great white. Shark whale. Ooh. Ooh. No, I love the whale shark. Um, shark, great white. <gasps> These things, if you haven't seen them in game. Oop. I'll press T. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Press R to rotate. So, yeah, that's it's, it's basically fairly straightforward. Rotating stuff. What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Um, probably. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, I just want to, I just want to go to items and see if we can find some sticks. Are there any sticks here? Uh, PQRS, yeah, there it is, stick. So we'll just press T, bring that up, rut to rotate, there we go. And then the other thing you can do is when you have an item in the world is press C to clone. Click on your object, uh, R to rotate, and then oh, this won't work very well. I was trying to give him legs. That's what I was trying to do. Let's make a proper land shark. Uh, can we give him like a gun or something? Oh, spear gun. Okay. 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 We'll get back to the rocks in a second. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I can work in Hollywood as a, like a, um, what are those things, the, oh, horror film director, that'd be great, a little bit of a rotate, rotate, there we are, and uh, just bring that down a little bit, we have created Landshark, and he's got his little gun, I mean, yeah, I love it, you can just, you can nom me down, or he can shoot you in the butt if you try and run away, it's like Freddy Krueger, just less terrible. Anyway, uh, I'll forget about him and when we make the map go live, he'll... What If you do put a, a shark on the land like that, he'll just swim down through the uh, through the island mesh straight away and end up in the sea, kind of in a roundabout way. It's, uh, it's a curious way that it happens. Anyway, back to rocks. We're not getting much done. Why? Because I'm talking. Damn. All right, fine. We'll get these rocks in. If you drag something from the toolbox and it snaps to another rock, then it'll follow it until you let go. Follow the terrain until you let go. Big rock. Yeah, like that just did. That's weird. I know, right? Uh, rotate. And then T. There is a slight problem. Eventually some of this is going to start snapping to other, other items. Uh, I kind of want to fill that in. But I still want some overhang. There. Okay. There we go. So... What we're doing is making a path so that people can jump up without making it look like a path that people can jump up. What? Have you lost your mind? Yes. And no. But also yes. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we just want to end up up here somewhere. So here you go up, 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 up. And then up the flat here. So big rock. Uh, one of the things we can do is hit terrain in the objects so we can just grab that. See it just kind of snaps the the, uh, the geometry of the cliffs and then move that in a little bit, drop it down a little bit and pull it out a little bit. We do want to make sure that um, if people are jumping up here there's no big gaps like kind of down here that people can get stuck in. I don't think they can there. 
Uh, but what I don't want to do is use like metal walkways and things. I think that would be okay to get to there. You should be able to jump up all the way to the top. Should be possible. Right, we can check that by going... Whoop. I mean, we can also check that in game itself uh, by going into the game. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't look like there'll be any difficulty for a player to get up there. The width and the height of uh, a player is perfect for that. We're going to have to dress the area up a little bit. Man, there we go. So we can probably delete the... Uh, yeah, let's delete the door for the time being. Because I just wanted to check it up here. It's easier instead of manipulating that particular door just to get another one out. Mm -hmm. And then move that forward a little bit. And then down. See, here might be an issue for jumping up. Um, yeah, we don't need to create a ramp. But we do need to just make it a little bit easier. Big rock one. Too big. Big rock five. A bit chonk. Uh, we can use the little rocks. Uh, small rock, small rock, small rock. Yeah, that's perfect. Then we'll just manipulate that down. It doesn't again? It doesn't look like much of anything, but it should be should be fine. Yeah, that should be absolutely fine. So there is now a way up to to the top of this cliff. It's uh, it's there. We can signpost it a little bit um, by adding rocks into the ground uh we'll also uh, if you hear the wind in the background that's storm that's another storm it's just constant storms it's not it's not stopped raining since september i mean i, I keep saying that but it's true it, it genuinely hasn't stopped raining since september but it's like oh it's, it's the uk of course it doesn't stop raining yeah i know um we're trying to it's kind of a kind of a very tight area here um we want a different small rock, so turn an object so we don't accidentally see with that um, the, the toggle selected. What we might do is accidentally um, drag something, like change its rotation or just drag it off the map. There is a it's like a Windows effect uh, where you can have two things selected at the same time. We're just going to put this in the ground. We're just going to rotate it so it doesn't look like it's either placed. So it's kind of following the terrain a little bit. There's a little lumpy boy here. Just kind of here and i just want it to follow that little little uh, lump in the terrain so we're kind of looking at what's going on down there also looking at the jaggedness here and making some sort of sense of it so i hit terrain and objects again we can even use the same piece all we'll do is I hit right to rotate and then kind of move this around what we don't want to do is make um make it so that the play gets stuck i'm also going to pull these out of the ground a little bit because there's going to be grass texture for most most people uh, on high power systems there's going to be grass texture all over here scrub texture here so we want this to actually be high enough so that the grass doesn't clip through um why don't we put it here that's better because there's a curious little overhang there um i think we could probably do something with that excellent so there's rocks on the ground so it looks like something's happened there's rocks over here naturally anyway the terrain and objects and we kind of want to dress this up. So what we'll do is bring the land up behind here. Uh, we can hit terrain. Now uh, we can do that. Uh, we can. We're going to have to use raise and lower. Make sure the mount slider is all the way down, just just off the stop, because this tool will will. Uh, well, it's not a friendly tool. Uh, change the size down. Go for a hard brush this time, because we don't want it. We don't want the land spilling out this side of the cliff. Um, and we'll just push and hold. Um, just kind of with the brush, uh, it's kind of hard to see, brush part way into the cliff. And then I'm just going to push and hold and let that spill up just until I see it start to poke out um, in between the rocks. There we go. See it a little bit easier there. And then what we can do is set to train, uh, retrain paint height there. Um, and then click and hold. We can actually change the amount up a little bit more. There you go, so it's a little bit faster to paint out. That's nice. Which gives us a nice kind of platform here on the other side, and that just fills in that cliff back uh, nicely. Because people wanna people wanna walk around. People do want to walk around. We'll probably recreate this bit somewhere else. Um, and we can also add 
uh, rock walkways and things because people like to be up high that's one of the things that uh, you find out about people people always want the top bunk if there's bunk beds uh, people always want to be on the top floor if they're in um in a, a high-rise building uh, which is why the, the the penthouse is always the the primo floor to be on even though it's the most difficult to get to so it's like ah, oh, you want to be on the floor at the top of the building that is super hard to get to it takes ages, and if the elevator is broken, well, you're stuffed. Okay, so we've raised that up. It looks like a mess, but we'll sort that out later. Um, because now we've got this a sort of spilled uh, rock um, spilled rock down here. And it's kind of created a beautiful little path through there. That is amazing, is it not? Look at it. Look at that. It's almost as if we know what we're doing. Do we know what we're doing? Um... No, it's fine. It's fine. We're just gonna we're just gonna put stuff down so it looks like we we um, we meant to do this, including that's not the ficus tree that I wanted. That's not helping my cause. Uh, this ficus tree. Well, he's gonna snap to the <laughs> he's gonna snap to the terrain, which is a bit of an issue because we know this is actually flat, so we can let go there. He won't snap anymore. Uh, I wish there's a way of toggling that on and off. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. Oh, oh, oh we, we got it back, we got it back. Uh, also, also with so many objects nearby, and the, the problem with the trees is the, the, the toggle point is right at the base. As soon as we jam that into the ground, which is, you know, precisely what we're going to do, let me let go of it, it's, chances are it's going to snap to something else. So R to rotate, and what we want to do is we want to rotate that around. T to transform, bring him up, and then just squish him into the rock. We don't... And there it goes. There it goes. I don't know what it's selected. It selected a cliff. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, can we get the tree back? Yeah, we can. There we go. Like, oh. I, I, I long for an update where that when you have an object selected, you actually have to physically push a button to deselect it, or you have a you have an object list at the side so that you can actually. Um, select something that is buried within a bunch of other objects so you can create something very very complex uh, this branch here this the curved branch is what we're looking for to create a bit of an archway I'm gonna push that as far as I can in the rock uh, where it still looks good and it still looks good it looks like it's growing out of the rock um, I'm just making sure there's no awkwardness with the other branches so that's about as far down as we can get away with we need to make sure that height is good um, we I mean we'll dress this area afterwards again you know uh we will hit structures we will hit terrain and objects so we purposefully dis dislike thing and then make sure the door can go underneath there we go there's mr door his little adventure it's just spooping down the rocks uh what does that do why did we do that well that frames that quite nicely because we're all about that framing uh so we've got some across the top some on the sides and then something on the bottom is texture excellent it invites you in but wait why would somebody be up here why would anybody want to be here excellent question um that is actually a really good question so we are going to go back to trees and we should probably put a reason for people to be up there and that is going to be the yucca because that's one of the things that people desperately desperately want in their lives they're like i really want a yucca in my life and they do grow pretty big trust me i no we used to have one in the bathroom when I was a kid, and now it's a tree in the garden. Not my garden, but you know, I, I just I know it existed. We went from bathroom plant to, oh my, this thing's huge. So yeah, we'll put that there, and that breaks up the the grayness of the rock. Um, we sorry, in objects. So that breaks up the grayness of the rock. It also means people want to come up here because they want to see this. They want to chop the stuff down off it. Uh, but it also means that this is now a valid path because because of that there, that that resource. Uh, so people are going to want to get to it. So what we can do is put another cliff down or something here. So it, that path is then need they need to use the path. Um, we can we can repeat on that side of the island something like this. Uh, but here we can do the same thing and we can throw in, say, um, that shark. Uh, we can sh uh, throw in like a, a rock walkway so that it, it becomes something that you can actually walk to. Excellent, excellent. I'm thinking 
Uh, we should probably get on with that. Why don't we do that? So we will go to rocks. We will go to find cliff six. Hello, you're the biggest cliff in the game. Actually, why would we do that? We know we can click on that. We know we can press C to clone. We can know we can grab the red toggle. We know we can press R. We know we can turn it. Then we know we can press T again. And then everything is as it should be. That's actually a pretty freaking perfect. There's a little bit of um, repeat here. I think we should probably keep it. Let's move it in a little bit. Yep. No, that's perfect. Perfect. Uh, we can press R maybe. Oop, move that down a little bit. Because we've done the same thing on the other side. Press T. Grab the green and just nudge it down. So that's good. Uh, terrain objects so we don't have anything selected. Uh, once we've got terrain, uh, we've already read the terrain set height, but it's always good um, on the set height brush to do it again. So we select there, which means that we can now, <laughs> keeping an eye on the amount slider, uh, it's not so bad with the terrain brush, uh, the set height brush, but you know you, you desperately want to keep an eye on that unless you want to really mess the map up because there is no undo. Why is there no undo? Well, unduly. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's no, there is no undo. Uh, this bit here, big and flat and kind of boring, we're going to have to do something with that. Um, but, 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 until then, uh, we can go back to the objects and find the objet d'art. Clef 2, you're enormous and completely impractical, but also quite cool. Uh, what do we use over here? We'll probably use the same thing. Uh, terrain objects just to deselect. Yeah, we use the same cleft there. And then probably cleft 5. Hmm. Alright. Yeah, so we'll repeat that this side. Oh, but why? But why would you do that? Uh, because I am a terrible person. No, because um, sometimes you just want things to be familiar. Not quite the same, not identical, never identical. But you need some familiarity uh, patterns. People see patterns even if they're not looking for them. Grab, grab green, drop that down. So we've got a fairly big gap here, uh, which is good. We probably uh, terrain objects. There we go. Uh, cliff for one of these has got a nice big slope on the side that one there's something wrong with the level of detail yeah there is lod low lod high hmm okay so rotor rotate t to transform there we go let's nudge that into there and that continues on why would we do this why would we not do this this bothers me bother me uh so terrain reads terrain set height um change the brush size down a little bit and then just pull the terrain into that little bit of rock there making sure that we don't go too far Oop. excellent so what do we got we need to push it over a little bit we, we are viewing this in a 3d space 3d environment uh, there we go no, oh, no, it's all beans. No, we can we can hit smooth height. Um, change it to soft brush, and then just kind of brush that back, keeping a careful eye on the amount slider again, because otherwise you could beans it properly. Beans it. In fact, why don't we do that over here while we are uh, while we are in the mood? Uh, wrong button. That's smooth height. We want that height. So let's bring that up into the rock into, into the cliff. And then smooth it back, smooth. And then it's like it can be go down a little bit more. You never really need it beyond the first uh, first little bit. And we can push that back in there. Excellent. So we're just smoothing that back so there's no sudden drop off. Uh, same thing there. And there. I mean, we can come back to this at any point. That's not even an issue. What we don't want is a huge gap uh, in the terrain between the cliff like we that's fine but what we don't want is a huge gap where a player can fall in and get stuck because the only option at that point would be to reload the last save and if they haven't saved in a while then they're gonna be upset with you okay rocks 
kind of rocks are we going to be using here? We're going to be using a lot of rocks because one of the things is that the game. Mm, well, that was actually a cool rock. There we go. Um, the game has a kind of a limited palette, so we're working in a limited palette with with kind of what we got. Uh, and we know that we can do some cool stuff with rocks in terms of rock arches and rock bridges and you know there's big rocks small rocks rocks the size of your head oh we were gonna go there right uh terrain objects in fact no we can clone that why would we do that because why would we not um yeah so this is the back of that that rock this is the end if we were to flip it over it would look weird uh, it would just look like the same rock touching each other. But because we're ha uh, having half of this in the ground, these now look like two different rocks. It looks a little bit natural, a bit more natural. Um, I'm trying to manipulate it so it's kind of fairly even on, but the rocks rotated around. So we're going to need to use the rotate function. There we go. There we go. Working in 3D space. It takes a little bit of thought. Um, and I'm backing these two off because what I want to do, train objects, so we got everything deselected, is uh, is use a small rock. Mm, this small rock? This small rock. I mean, it doesn't feel right. It kind of feels wrong. I wish there were other small rocks, or sort of rounder, bolder types. But but again, we, we use what we got. So we'll drop that down into what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, rotor rotate. So we're just going to have to rotate this around until it kind of feels like it should be there. Um, T, move that out a bit. Move that kind of there. We can have it so it's literally just touching. Just touching. It doesn't actually need to make like solid contact as long as it makes some contact. Uh, there we go. And then same for this. Be a cause, because uh, rock's pretty freaking strong. There we go. So rock is pretty freaking strong. There's T, and we can. Whoop. That was F. And that's a button we hit every now and again. Um, if you want to know what F does, well, say we got something selected, and oh no, I've I don't know where it is. I I went to the bathroom or whatever. F snaps to it. Just looks in its general direction. Boop, focus. There we go. Cool. Now we know. It's a it's a good little good little tool. If you got something selected and you don't know what it is, then uh, press F and you'll suddenly go there. Um, I just want to stretch this out a little bit more. So we're, it's going to be moving this stuff. Uh, this is a big big old cliff. We can move this horizontally, vertically, laterally. There we go. That's better. It's a little better. We're kind of um, inadvertently working with the terrain that we have. Um, it's not a problem. It's kind of cool that we were able to do this. Uh, so what we're doing is moving hammer down a little bit. I'm pretty sure there was another cliff four. Hmm, it's cliff three. Oh yes, yeah, cliff three. So we can use this. Uh, so we're kind of we're putting a lot of stuff down. Again, LOD, that's low level of detail, high level of detail. But this has a big flat, this is this is the one I was looking for. A uh, big flat side to it. There we go. Help the player hibbity hop all the way to the top. So we've got a kind of a, a rocky little, little path. Again, it's a path, but it's not one that we're advertising as such. So there we go. Hmm. Yes. I, I like that. And there's that just touching. So what you want is just no light coming through it. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, sorry, in objects, because I know we've got a cliff selected. And then what we're going to do is, because we've got a slight change in texture, and this just kind of looks like it's here, in, in the middle of freaking nowhere, it's like, well, why is this here? Who, who, who put this here? Shall I rock? Can you rescue us? Uh, rescue me? There you go. Shall I rock boulders on the floor? It's kind of a, a cheap way of adding a load of like rubble. Oh, but there's your round rocks. I know, I know. I don't like using them that often. There we go. So we've got some rocks down there, and then over here, uh, terrain objects. 
Uh, we can either use small rocks, which is fine. We could probably bring the beach out here. We don't need to leave it as is. Uh, just so it looks like something's happened, stuff has fallen down. Uh, never, never Shoreline Rock 2. You'll never be able to select it ever again. That'll be it. No, that'll be on your map. However you however you let go of it, uh, and then you'll be sad. You'll be like, oh, I want to move it just a little bit. And uh, yeah, that's impossible. Uh, I don't know why. It's one of those ones that's bugged. I think the toggle's bugged on it or something. So there we go. We just pop these bits into the ground. We've done something similar before. But we, there's nothing we've not done before uh so we go terrain objects and back on terrain just so we do have everything deselected we we've now got a rock arch uh we've got a tree at the top we've got some rocks that you can climb up uh, this feels a little bit too tight here i want more beach so we're gonna hit uh set height and read from here um make sure the amount of slider is down make sure we've got the soft brush brush selected uh we're gonna move that make that bigger we can't see the brush um if it's underneath the water mesh, but if we go under the water mesh, we can suddenly see the brush. It's just a thing that you have to deal with. Hashtag, hashtag not spawn. Uh, hashtag deal with it. No, that's that's a terrible thing. Telling someone to deal with it. That's like, well, why don't you want to provide the answer or a solution to the problem? Hmm, who's the butthole now? So we're just gonna bring this up here. Uh, I'm gonna bring this up here as well. There we go. Oh, that's looking good. It's looking good. And we can we can always add trees and stuff around the outside. Um, it just makes it feel a little bit a little bit less tight uh, around the outside, um, like it's just pressed right up against the the water. Yeah, we. I mean, we can do that. We can have cliffs drop into the sea. We've done it before, but this time, this time I just wanted to add little little difference uh so we're going to change the smooth height and the amount can go up a bit then press and hold oh, might can go up a lot inherited sliders pain in my butt um so we'll just brush underwater make sure we get it underwater and on the on the beach as well and we're getting rid of any sort of triangly bumps uh, essentially some of the randomness i like stuff like this it, it feels well it feels normal it feels natural um which is good I like that. Uh, we can also do things here to kind of disguise the fact that we've got a huge lumpy outcropping of rock. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is be tossing a lot of trees next to it. Uh, specifically pine trees? No, palm trees. Palm trees. Palm one. Hello. Uh, you're pretty big. You're also pretty big, but not as big. So we'll just drop that on the ground. Press R to rotate. You can only rotate it even though they're in the game. Um, you can find it at an angle. I don't know, and it's not been put into the map editor yet. I wish it was. More, I'd, I'd take more options in the map editor. I'm just going to whip these two round. Just going to make sure the leaves aren't clipping through each other, or just obviously clipped into the cliff, which they're not. Uh, we hit terrain and objects. So stuff like that um, just breaks up the fact that you've got a huge just wall of cliff there. So we uh, we're creating a bit of a playground. It's a playground, that's what we're doing. Oh, oh, buddy, do you know what time it is? Oh, it's not nightmare time. Well, there you are, nightmare freaking fuel. I think it's time to sign off. Yeah, so if you're liking this video, uh, liking any of this stuff, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click the little bell, because I'll give you notifica notifications when videos go live. Um, Anything else? I don't know. This is a pretty fresh video. I mean, definitely, definitely lean in and give your monitor a little, little, little taste. Uh, phone. Uh, you can taste the freshness. It's it's probably going live in about a couple of hours. So uh, yeah, if you wondered, if you wondered how fresh these videos are, definitely. Um, definitely, if you are D and D um, orientated, look up uh, Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft. It's uh, it's got well, got me excited. Uh, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I'll catch you next time. <laughs>